All right, guys, got another quick project here. Uh, I made some card holders for a game we play called Zombicide, and uh, it comes with these uh, game cards that track your um, character's progress and whatnot, but he also has his inventory, which are these five cards, and you move cards around. Uh, the two top ones are the ones you can use, the three bottom ones are kind of just in storage, but if, as you need to use different things, you move them around, and when they're all laying flat, they uh, they kind of get unwieldy, hard to, to manage once you get a full deck. And so uh, I decided I'd use some more scrap and make these so that we had an easy way to manage our cards with the uh, slots cut as wide as they are. You can kind of um, pull them down or just move them to the side to read the information on the cards behind as you're trying to make your decisions. So that's the, uh, the finished product there, and uh, let's get into the build. Thanks. Well, I got another project where I'm starting with scraps. You can tell I've done quite a few projects recently without throwing away <laughs> these small offcuts, but uh, I promise the next one is gonna be a, a full-fledged project with new wood. Uh, but basically, I'm just measuring to figure out what size my blocks need to be so that the cards will fit in them, and have a little room to move around and uh, I landed on right at six inches now uh, these these had a really clean cut on one end so I'm just gonna run the flat end uh, against the fence and then cut the other side square This ended up being uh, an inch and a quarter. And my stock's a little over uh, three quarters of an inch. It's, it's definitely closer to a full inch thickness, which is nice because it gives you some stability on the base uh, while you have the cards propped up. And since I don't have a, uh, a full height splitter in here, I'm, I'm just using that uh, other push stick to make sure everything stays tight against the fence. Now it's time to plane the boards. This walnut was more like uh, uh, five quarters instead of four quarters so by the time I'm done milling here it's right at about an inch thick. Have a little planer snipe there. Which uh, at some point I'm probably going to build some extension wings uh, for this planer. That's, that's my only complaint um, it, it is made for compact shops, so I understand why it is the way it is. Um, but for my purposes, I think I'm going to add at least another foot um, in feed and out feed uh, to, to this planer. So keep an eye out for that project. And I'm going to have another video here in a couple of days just talking about 2016 projects where hopefully everyone will kind of weigh in and let me know what they want. We've got a couple that I'm going to do no matter what you guys want because we need them for our family. But uh, I'd definitely like to know on those others that aren't critical for us uh, what you would like to see. So here's my PSA for the day. Uh, this here is called a captured cut because it has a stop block on the right that prevents the piece from moving to the right once it's cut. Uh, so now, once the blade cuts through, you saw the teeth picked up that top piece and kind of moved it back. If you make your cut and then lift the blade up while it's still spinning, the blade can actually grab that piece and the bottom piece, wedge them in, and send it flying, causing you to have to check your tool to make sure it's not broken and your pants to make sure they don't need to be changed. 
if I had turned these pieces a quarter turn, the they would have been better supported and that top one would have quit turning on me. As it is, it's still a safe cut. Turning it a quarter turn so that they were better supported would have made it safer, but either way, you do not want to lift the blade while it's still spinning. So I have my rip blade because it has a square ground um, teeth on it to make this cut and give us a nice square end. I've lined it up so that the cut is off center. I make one pass, turn, and make another pass. And this gives us our two grooves for the cards to rest in. And here it is from another angle. chamfering and clean up with a hand plane. By the way, does anyone have any experience with the Tormac sharpeners? I'm really debating between the T4 and the T7 and uh, not sure which way I'm going to go yet, but uh, if any of you have any experience and want to weigh in, please let me know. I'd, I'd love to hear your experiences. Is it really worth all the extra money for the, the T7 for someone who's not, you know, professionally sharpening, sharpening every day. So now I've got a little stop block set up and I've got my smoothing planer out. I'm just going to address these. They're uh, pretty clean cuts off the table saw already, but uh, a couple of passes removes any tool marks and gives me a really nice finish ready um, surface. One of my favorite finishes here is the Rattle Can Lacquer. Uh, it dries fast, it looks nice, and it's easy to touch up should uh, these get damaged in the future. watching and to ensure you get notifications when I post new videos make sure to hit the subscribe button. Take care.